Every couple months, I run across an article like this one that ranks the most environmentally friendly cities in the United States, or this one that somehow ranked Houston as the most sustainable city in America. And I've always wondered how they come up with these rankings. I assumed there were some kind of formal awards or measures for this kind of thing. But when I looked into it, I realized that they're basically just made up scorecards by writers and companies. And that got me thinking, what if I made up a list of the most sustainable cities in America? What would I learn? What would I choose to measure? And which city would ultimately win? So over the last few weeks, I interviewed sustainability experts all around the world, crunched a bunch of numbers, and asked all of you for submissions, ranking the most sustainable cities in the country. In this video, I'll share what I learned and which city won my very prestigious and official Most Sustainable City in America Award. First, let's talk about pledges and plans. In the last few years, hundreds of cities around the world have announced climate action plans and sustainability goals. Over that same period, hundreds of cities have also announced goals of getting 100% of their electricity from renewable energy. This is all awesome, and it's a sign of some really important progress. But from my perspective, plans and pledges should be table stakes at this point. So if a city didn't have one of these things, it didn't qualify for my very prestigious award. I was much more interested in what cities are currently doing, or even better, what they've already done to become sustainable. So with that said, the first two things that I looked at were how cities were making their buildings and transportation systems more sustainable. For many cities, the building sector and the transportation sectors are the source of their largest greenhouse gas emissions. One reason that I wanted to look at these sectors is the fact that cities actually have a lot of control over them. With buildings, we have permitting authority, and we have zoning, and we have building codes. Those are things that we can use to manage buildings. Transportation, obviously, most cities own their roads and control their roads so they can you know, shape their transportation system. Cities can either pass laws that make their transportation systems and buildings more sustainable or not. And those laws can have a huge impact. So to build my initial list of cities, I looked at a few things. First, I looked at how many people ride public transit. A good public transit system can get people out of their cars and reduce CO2 emissions and air pollution. But there's another reason that public transit is so important. Uh, even if we change over all our internal combustion engine cars to electric vehicles, we're still gonna have 50% of the air quality problems because 50% of the air quality problems come from the brake pads and the tires, not from the engine. You still have all the congestion problems which lead to all the waste of time, right? So here are the 10 cities where people ride public transit the most. There were definitely a few surprises on this list for me, like Ames, Iowa, home to Iowa State University, and apparently a pretty great public transit system. I also looked at what cities have a lot of bike commuters. If you wanna learn more about why bike infrastructure makes for such great cities, I'd recommend checking out my recent video on how the Netherlands built a biking utopia. Again, there were a few surprises on this list for me, like Key West, Florida, and Aspen, Colorado. I guess the world's global elite really love their bikes. Shortly after finding these two lists, I found an index of the best car-free cities. This index combined transit ridership, the share of bike and walk commuters, and the number of people that don't have a car. I felt like this index was a good measure of a city's entire transportation system. So I added the top five cities in both the big and small city category to my initial list. The next thing that I looked at was density. In general, denser cities tend to be more sustainable. They require less land per capita, which results in less habitat loss nearby. People don't need to drive as much. And residents tend to have smaller homes, which means less energy used for things like heating and cooling. Unsurprisingly, cities like New York and Boston tend to score highly on this metric. But in looking at the built environment, I wanted to look at more than just density. After all, a city could be dense, but power all of its buildings on dirty fossil fuels. Or it could be dense, but not encourage things like energy efficiency. So I thought I'd look at which cities have the least carbon emissions coming from their buildings. But this is where I ran into a bit of a problem. The cities with the least building emissions were almost all in California. And that makes sense. Cities like LA and San Francisco are in moderate climates. And that means that they don't have to use that much energy for things like heating and cooling. And I didn't think it was fair to measure a city based on what climate zone it's in. So I came up with a different approach. But we'll come back to that later. Something else that came up in a lot of my interviews was the amount of green space that a city has. I think a sustainable city is one that is, is filled with green spaces and not just one large green space in the middle, but really decentralized or dispersed green spaces that can be accessed by everyone and within a short distance. In addition to being lovely spaces to spend time, green spaces are a really useful climate adaptation tool. As our cities get hotter, parks can act like a natural air conditioner that brings the temperature down. 
Here are the 10 cities with the most green space today. Again, there were a few surprises for me on this list, like Las Vegas. Once again, we'll add the top five cities in this list to our leaderboard. Of course, green spaces are just one aspect of climate adaptation. In order to adapt to climate change, cities will need to do a lot more than just add parks and other green spaces. Some will need to build seawalls, while others will need to build heat shelters. But measuring a city's climate adaptation plans and progress is a little bit harder than measuring how many people ride public transit. So for this one, I relied on the recommendations from the experts that I interviewed. New York, Chicago, and Phoenix all came up as cities leading the way in climate adaptation. In Phoenix, for example, the city's experimenting with something called cool pavements to adapt to rising temperatures. Basically putting a reflective surface on the, on the pavement, right? So if you, you make it a lighter color, it's gonna reflect more sunlight rather than absorbing it and then becoming a kind of heat source. Phoenix has already coated about 100 kilometers of their streets with these cool pavements. And in the places that they have, temperatures are already 10 degrees cooler than in other parts of the city. Something else that came up a lot in my interviews was the importance of environmental justice and equity. Things like air pollution, flooding, and heat waves don't affect everybody in the same way. The impacts of climate change are unjust. They are you know, hitting the, the poorest, the most vulnerable. This is another aspect of a city's sustainability that's hard to measure. But a few cities came up a lot in my interviews. Those were New York, LA, Baltimore, Atlanta, and Chicago. So we'll add those to our list as well. And finally, because I'm a man of the people, I wanted to add submissions from you, the audience. Last week, I put out a tweet and a community post here on YouTube asking for your recommendations on the most sustainable cities in America. You recommended Denver in particular for their plan to phase out fossil fuels in buildings, Santa Monica for their bike lanes, Victoria and Vancouver, British Columbia for their, wait, those aren't US cities. Wrong. Oakland for their climate justice plan, and somebody recommended Salt Lake City for their fantastic mayor. At this point, I had 23 cities, but 23 is a bit of a weird number, unless you like Michael Jordan. So I decided to round out the list by adding two more cities. I added Boulder, Colorado, which has some of the best bike infrastructure in the country, a great natural climate solutions team and waste program, and most importantly, because I live here. And I added Burlington, Vermont, which already runs on 100% renewable electricity and has a surprising number of solar panels for how far north it is. And also, my wife went to college there. So with that, we had a top 25 list, which sounds a lot better than a top 23 list. Unless, again, you like Michael Jordan. Now the question was how to find a winner from here. Earlier, I mentioned that buildings are one of the largest sources of air pollution and carbon emissions in most cities. Over the last few years, many cities around the country have passed laws that will ban fossil fuels in newly built homes. The reality is that there's no way that a city can get to net zero emissions without this kind of policy. So I eliminated any city that hasn't yet passed a law prohibiting fossil fuels in new construction. This eliminated just over half the cities on my list, including, unfortunately, my city of Boulder. And with this, I had a top 12 most sustainable cities in America list, which is a bit of a weird number, unless you like Tom Brady. And more importantly, I promised the most sustainable city in America, not the 12 most sustainable cities. So I needed to filter my list down further. The next thing that I looked at was whether or not these cities had a composting program. Every day, Americans throw away about a third of their food. And while the best thing that we can do is reduce food waste, the second best thing we can do is compost. Unfortunately, most cities in America don't have composting programs. So I expected this to narrow our list. But 10 out of 12 cities left on my list did have a composting program. The only cities that didn't were Ithaca, New York, and Salt Lake City. So I removed those from my list. And now I had a top 10 list. In order to find my winner, I decided to analyze each city's consumption-based carbon emissions per capita, which is really a mouthful. This metric looks at the carbon emissions from all the goods and services that an average person consumes in a city. It includes the energy they use in their home, the fuel they use for transportation, the food that they eat, and the products that they buy. To find this data, I use a tool called Cool Climate Berkeley, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. But before revealing the final results, I wanna quickly explain what this number doesn't capture. Climate change is one of the biggest environmental problems of our time, but it's not the only one. Sustainability is about so much more than just carbon emissions. It's also about how we adapt to climate change. It's about racial and economic justice. It's about water use and biodiversity and so much more. I realized over the course of making this video that choosing just one winner is really a fool's errand, but I promised I would, so let's take a look at how each of these cities compare. And the winner of my very prestigious, most sustainable city in America award is 
New York City. As we saw earlier, New York has the highest transit ridership in the country. It's also one of the easiest places to live without a car. As a result, the city has low transportation emissions per capita. And if you've ever lived in New York, you know that most homes in the city are pretty small. And as a result, homes don't use that much energy. On top of that, New York has some of the lowest carbon electricity in the country. The main reason for this is that 33% of the electricity comes from nuclear, while another 22% comes from hydro. Nuclear and hydro also happen to be two of the most controversial forms of carbon-free electricity. So be sure to let me know your thoughts on those in the comments below. But all of that just describes New York today. Most of the people that I interviewed for this story agreed that New York has one of the best plans to address climate over the coming decades. In 2021, New York passed a law banning fossil fuels in new homes. They're also planning to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on adaptation projects over the coming years. And they have one of the most respected climate justice plans in the country. But none of that's to say that sustainability has to look like high-rise apartments and subway systems. As we saw earlier, there are plenty of small cities across America that are phasing out fossil fuels and encouraging things like transit use. And they're in states ranging from California to Iowa to Pennsylvania. The last thing that I wanna say is that every city in America, including the ones on this list, have a lot of work to do. You could argue that there aren't any sustainable cities in America today, given our high levels of consumption and waste. But that's a topic for another video. So with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.